Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Chef Rambo. I'm back with another recipe for y'all today. Today, guys, I'm making homemade pepperoni pizza. I'm doing everything from scratch. So make sure you guys hit that like, comment, share, and notification bell so y'all can get into today's video with me. It's good and it's delicious. Let's go ahead and get into it, y'all. Okay, so you guys are gonna need extra virgin olive oil, bread flour, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, salt. You're gonna need peeled tomatoes. I'm using the San Marzano product of Italy tomatoes, Italian seasoning, oregano, Mrs. Dash. I'm gonna be using the Rapid Rise Instant Yeast. I also have some provolone cheese, some mozzarella cheese, and some pepperonis. And I also have some tomato paste just to help intensify my pizza sauce and give it a little bit more flavor. I will make sure I have everything in the description box for you guys now to start things off we're gonna need five and one fourth cups of bread flour if you guys do not have bread flour all-purpose flour works perfectly fine but you're gonna need five and one fourth cup of bread flour Okay, guys, you are going to need four and one half teaspoons of instant yeast. If you're using the instant yeast I'm using, you're just going to need two of those little packets. Okay, we're going to do a half a tablespoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of granulated sugar, two teaspoons of salt. And now, 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 we are going to do the fun part. So we are going to take two cups of warm water and we are going to add four tablespoons of olive oil, you guys. If you put your oil in the water, it doesn't um, mess up the dough and it kind of is a little bit more incorporated when you pour it into your dough. So we're going to take two cups of warm water and we're going to put four tablespoons of olive oil in it and we're going to pour it right into our little flour sugar salt mixture and i'm just going to take a wooden spoon you guys and i'm just going to start to stir this maybe for about three to four minutes um the goal that I'm looking for is once all of the dough kind of collides together, um, that's what I want. So as you can see, they're, they're, the dough is um, trying to come together. So we kind of want all of the dough to come together before we flour and take this out of our mixing bowl. So all I'm doing is using my wooden spoon and some elbow grease, baby, and I'm stirring, stirring, stirring to make sure that this dough comes out perfect and delicious. Okay, guys, this is exactly how I wanted my dough to look. As you see, everything is nice and stuck together. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of that bread flour and I'm gonna put it down on my countertop and I am going to take that wooden spoon and scoop out my dough. Now, as you guys can see, the dough is kind of all over the place. So what we are gonna do is we are gonna start kneading the dough. This is so important when you guys are baking and using dough. Um, if you do not need your dough, your dough will pretty much not turn out the way you want it to. So this step is not optional. It's, it's a must. You have to knead your dough. So um, if you guys want to know how long you need to knead your dough, you probably want to knead your dough for about 10 minutes. You don't want to over knead it because then your dough is going to become really dry and really dense. And as you're kneading your dough, you're going to also notice that you're going to lose some of that flour that we just put down so just sprinkle in a little bit of that flour right on top is not going to hurt anybody's feelings okay so as you guys can see i'm just basically taking big pieces of dough folding it over and trying to get it to my ideal ball that i want and so when you stick your finger in when it pops back up prings back up your dough is perfect so now I'm just finishing up kneading the dough. I don't have my nails on today, y'all. I'm a little ratchet, okay? But I didn't need no nails today because I'm, I'm making dough. I got to get my hands dirty now. So as you guys can see, this is how you want your dough to look. It is perfect when you touch it, when you take your finger and stick your finger in it, it pops right back up. 
So after 10 minutes of kneading, we are gonna go ahead and put our little dough in a mixing bowl with olive oil. We're gonna cover it really good. And we actually have to sit this out and let this rise for two hours. I am gonna take a warm um, towel and put it right on top. Put this in a warm area and we're gonna let this um, sit out for two hours. Now let's work on the pizza sauce. So you're gonna need about six to eight crushed San Marzano peeled tomatoes. You guys have to make sure they say products of Italy. If they don't, your sauce is not gonna be official, okay? So once you get about six to eight of those tomatoes, you're gonna take half a tube of tomato paste and put that in. You're also gonna take half a tablespoon of minced garlic because baby, we need garlic. You're gonna do a half a tablespoon of salt. Half a tablespoon of Italian seasoning because that's a must. And we're also going to do a half a tablespoon of oregano. If you guys are making this sauce, it's good for um, four days. And we're also going to do a half a tablespoon of black pepper. We're going to do one tablespoon of sugar and a half a tablespoon of garlic powder. If you're freezing this sauce, it can be good in the freezer for six months. So after we get all of our seasonings in, we're gonna go ahead and blend this sauce up. As you can see, it's changing colors. Everything is starting to break down. We're gonna give it a little bit of a shake and we're gonna put that thing right back in here, okay? We're trying to break down the garlic, trying to break down all those seasonings so that all of this sauce is delicious and it's evenly incorporated onto our pizza. Okay, because the sauce is dang near the most important part to the pizza. I did a taste test and it tastes delicious. Okay, so now we're gonna shred up some cheese. I've got some mozzarella and some provolone that I got from my local grocery store. I'm probably gonna end up using um, half of the cheese. So I got a pound of mozzarella and a pound of provolone. So I ended up cutting these in half. So for my pizza, I ended up using a little less than a pound of cheese, okay? So I'm gonna start off with my mozzarella and I'm gonna go ahead and start shredding it up. I find it when you shred your own cheese, they turn out better. Look at that. Okay, we're done with the mozzarella. Now we can start on the provolone. When you shred your own cheeses, they melt better and they just, they turn out so much better. So we've got our mozzarella, we've got our provolone cheese. We are 100% good to go. So after two hours, look how much our dough has rised, you guys. I see a couple air bubbles, but honey, don't you worry about that. We are gonna bring this dough back alive. So as you can see, a little bit of the oil is still on there, no big deal. We're just gonna put down a little bit of that bread flour and we are gonna knead this dough again, guys, for about another minute or two. We're just touching base with this dough. We're just rehydrating it, giving it a little bit of love, affection, and attention so we can come back alive when we cook it. Now, after um, kneading for about, I say, after kneading for about a minute or two, you're gonna notice that your dough has kind of came back alive again after it's been sitting out with the damp, warm uh, dish towel over it. So now we can actually start tucking and rolling and we can separate our delicious dough into two pieces. Now, if you guys were making a huge deep dish pizza, you probably would just wanna use the whole thing of dough. But because, honey, I gotta save my dough, we're gonna make two pizzas with this. We're gonna split this right down the middle and look how beautiful our dough is. It turned out perfect. These dough balls are beautiful. So I have my dough ready to go and we can go ahead and start shaping our dough. Now, this is probably where I could have used a little bit of help. Um, this is where the beginning side of being a beginner pizza chef or whatever you wanna call it, someone who's never made homemade pizza, a beginner is, is really, really starting to show my colors. I mean, some people are probably looking at this video like, girl, this is cringe. Oh my gosh, this is cringe worthy, girl. You do not know how to stretch out dough. You're making it gross. It looks all nasty. 
whatever. But look, you guys, in order for me to learn, I have to practice. And there's some things that I would do differently. But honey, I wouldn't do it too, a whole lot differently because when I tell you this pizza came out delicious, it came out delicious. And I ain't even saying that because it's mine. It came out really good. So I threw it in the air a little bit to kind of stretch it out. So maybe that might help give me my idealistic shape. I wanted it to be circular, but it kind of ended up being like rectangle circular. So I had a rolling um, pin. So I just took that and kind of rolled it, tried to get as much of my edges to come out as possible. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, it came out pretty good. It came out really, really, really good. I'm not even saying that to toot my own horn. This turned out good. If you guys are someone, if you guys are people who doubt yourself and think I could never make a homemade pizza, that's good. I have been practicing and watching YouTube videos for years how to make pizza. After making pizza in 2014, it turned out so horrible, I never wanted to make pizza again. After watching YouTube and watching videos and doing research, this is the recipe that I learned and that I came up with, and it worked. So I'm telling you, for all the doubters, for all the people who don't believe that they can make good quality pizza, if you do what I'm doing in this video and you follow what I follow and you listen to the instructions, your pizza will turn out just as good. Hell, it might even turn out a little bit better. And you guys don't only have to use pepperoni. You can use onions. You could use peppers, mushrooms, olives, jalapenos. You could use bacon, chicken, steak, whatever you want to use. I just use pepperoni because I like pepperoni. But if you guys wanted to use sausage, honey, you could use whatever you want to use, okay? You make your pizza how you like. So once our dough is as close to the edge as we can get it, I'm being fancy here, just throwing the dough up in the air, giving it that good old love, we can start assembling our pizza. Um, you want to get a decent amount of sauce. I'm probably using about a half a cup of sauce. If I could go back, I would have put just a little bit more. But hey, that's what I got a whole nother dough ball in my refrigerator for y'all. If I want to make another pizza today, I will. And I am. And it's going to turn out just as good. So we're going to go in here with some of that shredded mozzarella cheese that we grated a little bit ago. You want to try to put as much of the cheese to the crust as possible. Some people are going to argue with me. Why is your sauce to the edge? Why is your cheese to the edge? That's not how you make pizza. That's not how we do it. This is how I do it, okay? I'm Ramsey Jordan, Chef Rambo, and this is how I do it. And the way that I do things is not how you do things, and that's okay. So after we get a little bit of mozzarella and a little bit of that provolone cheese on our pizza, we can start putting on our pepperonis. If you guys don't eat pepperoni, you could put, like I said, peppers, mushrooms, bacon, sausage. You can use whatever toppings you like. I have kind of a plain uh, family, and we, we just like our pizza with pepperoni. Um, I think for the pizza today, I'm going to use some Italian sausage and pepperoni, but normally we just use pepperoni. I don't be liking all that extra stuff to take away from the natural flavors of the pizza. So once you get as many pepperonis as you want on your pizza, it's looking good, looking fancy. This, and y'all, I'm going I'm to be 100% real with y'all. My house is literally smell like Papa John's for probably like six hours after I, while I'm making pizza. Like my whole house smelled delicious. I put a little bit of oregano on top. I have my oven preset to 415 and you want to cook this pizza for 25 to 30 minutes. Please do not exceed 30 minutes if you want your pizza to taste like a pizza. And after 30 minutes, this is how your pizza looks, child. I put a little bit of that delicious, delicious, delicious garlic butter on top. I took some butter, minced garlic, garlic powder, and salt and pepper and parsley, and I'm just going to brush that on my edges so that way every time we bite into this pizza, we get a delicious, flavorful punch of garlic butter, okay? This is the same garlic butter I will put on my seafood boils or anything of that nature, y'all. It has so much flavor. 
So I like to start on my edges and brush the edges. And then after I get all the edges brushed, I am going to actually start to brush on the garlic butter in the center of the pizza as well. If you guys have ever had um, Domino's, this this garlic butter tastes similar to how their garlic, their garlic uh, butter tastes on their crust. So this is how our pizza looks. I made this pizza homemade with my hands from scratch. I threw my own dough in the air. I grated my own cheese. I made my own pizza sauce. This pizza looks just as good as Papa John's, Domino's, Little Caesars. I mean, I could, I would, I would, I would bet any amount of money my pizza is better. We did not have a pizza stone. We did not cook this in no thousand wood oven degree fire. We didn't do that, y'all. We made this in our own freaking house, our own freaking kitchen, in our own freaking oven. And this is how your pepperoni pizza will turn out if you listen and follow those simple instructions that I have for you guys in the description, in the description box. I can't even talk, y'all. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and start cutting up our pizza. Um, the only thing that I honestly did not like was the fact that I didn't have that perfect circle that I'm like used to seeing with pizza. And some people are going to say, girl, you didn't have that perfect circle because it's homemade. I know, but um, I just felt like I wanted to get that perfect circular pizza. But, you know, this pizza turned out absolutely delicious. It wasn't really that hard. Like, I never knew how easy it is to bake. I always assumed baking was, like, so hard, and it took, like, six it? days, but it really didn't. Good. And my kids loved it. it. Good, they loved it so Hi. much. Even my daughter. Do you see your pizza? Ooh. Mm, look yours? at that pizza. Ooh. Delicious. And my kids, we got to have ranch with our pizza. But look at that delicious garlic butter. Pepperonis are cooked perfectly. The crust is nice and golden brown. The cheese is nice and bubbly. This is by far one of the easiest pizza recipes I've ever seen. 